The House of Representatives began its summer recess this week, allowing members of Congress to hit the campaign trails back home as the November elections approach. Back in Washington, prosecutors have dropped charges against nearly half of the 25 people arrested during the pro-Hamas riots following Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's address to Congress. Now, President Biden frequently says that no one is above the law, but is that the case when the left riots? Joining me now to discuss this and more, Congressman Pete Sessions. He serves on the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability and the House Financial Services Committee. He represents the 17th Congressional District of Texas. Congressman Sessions, welcome back to Washington Watch. Tony, thank you very much. What a stunning uh, 10 days since I was last with you. Yes, a lot happening uh, last week in our nation's capital. You attended the prime minister's address to Congress. Unfortunately, it came with a uh, sideshow of violent protests and vandalism in Washington. You know a little bit about this. Your father was the FBI director. The G District of Columbia is overseen by the federal, a federal prosecutor. Uh, are you concerned that they've dropped half of these charges? Sure I am, but it's very consistent with uh, what you could expect. You, you know and I know that Washington is a work-free drug zone. It's a zone where they do not intend to fall through, follow through with the law, and that's the problems that they've got. They have lawlessness in Washington, D.C., and that's why earlier in the year we even turned down their crime bill because of the way they look at this. So it's a real problem for people who would choose to come to Washington or, in the sad case, to look at Washington, the center of our democracy. Are you concerned, Congressman Sessions, that this just fuels the concern by so many Americans out there that there's a two-tiered system of justice? If you're conservative and you engage in, well, and I certainly don't condone it, but you engage in behavior like we saw on January the 6th, you get one sort of treatment. If you're the left and you're rioting uh, because of a George Floyd incident or now Benjamin Netanyahu comes to the city, you're treated differently. Well, I am concerned about it, but, but we also want to remember that you have at the very head of this, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, who are openly radical in their ideas, even to suggest, as the President uh, Biden has taken on, to change the Constitution of the United States of America. These go back to ideas that we remember with Roosevelt and even Supreme Court Justice uh, in 1928 spoke about this as a problem. Uh, when, when Supreme Court Justice uh, said that, that essentially those people that think these are good ideas, it sounds so good, but in, in, in respect, when you look at it, it's dividing our country and changing who we are. And the same things from 1928, 1933 are alive today. You have people in Washington, D.C., who say that they will, are following the law. And yet what's interesting about what President Biden has done is he would be prosecuted for those things that he did that have now come to light directly to the American people for his activities. Uh, and for, for him to say that he would be for this is, is really very interesting. Well, anytime we change something that the founders put in place. It's something that we need to give a lot of thought uh, to. I mean, when you look at the Constitution, it is only the Supreme Court that is laid out in the Constitution. Lower courts are a creation of Congress. But anytime we have tinkered with the Constitution over the years and, and modified something major, uh, it has had ripple effects upon our republic. And so to propose this on his way out of office uh, suggests that uh, this is a, a last-ditch effort for the left to grab hold of power. Well, in fact, it does. And, and Tony, you and I are really not old enough to remember this, but Frank Johnson was a federal district court judge in Alabama. And he is the, the impetus behind ruling uh, on the civil rights cases. And he did that knowing he had a lifetime appointment. He did that knowing that he could make tough decisions. My father also served as the chief 
chief judge of the Western District of Texas and had to take on many, many hard cases. And while they were all very uh, familiar and good for law enforcement rule of law, the, the facts of the case are that judges, and it says in the Constitution, are appointed for a lifetime. And that is to allow them to be able to make these decisions without political power. And it's that political influence that the Democratic Party wants to have on judges. Article three judges and the Supreme Court would be permanently marred if this were to happen. Yeah, excellent point. You're, you're absolutely right. The founders, they, they knew what they were doing. It was, they, were, they had uh, very contemplative when they came to the structure of, of our government. Again, it's just something that uh, we, we change. We should do so very carefully. Uh, as we approach well, that. I, I want to switch gears a little bit to the task force. Last week, as Congress was wrapping up, one of the last things uh, to be done was a task force. Uh, they established, passed the legislation to establish a task force to investigate the assassination attempt on former President Trump. Uh, what's that going to look like, and when can we expect a report on that? Well, in fact, it is going to happen. It will be done on a bipartisan basis. Uh, Mike Johnson made sure that he did not follow Nancy uh, Pelosi's lead, where she made it all one party, and then those completely agreed with her. It must be bipartisan. We must get to the bottom of it. It will be delivering its results, or at least whatever the results they have at the time, on December uh, before about the time we leave. But here's the bottom line. Every day we are revealing more and more about this. And the FBI director, Ray, is smart to not only bring forth that information when he gets it publicly, but to make sure that what he does is provided to the American people in a format to where it stops people from guessing about what happened. There are thousands of people who have data and information. We do not come out with a straightforward way to look at this. It's a problem. Now, second point. Members of Congress are also receiving hundreds of pieces of information that we then keep for ourselves. And so the FBI has to make sure that they really do do the right job because there's a disconnect in what some people think is, is someone trying to change or alter the facts of the case. I have confidence in the FBI to properly do this, but I will tell you the Secret Service amazingly looks inept and, and like they have real problems that we have to get through sooner. So I hope that as this information comes out, we are able to help uh, talk about that and shape something between now and the time we have an election. Yeah, I think it's extremely important, as you pointed out. I, in fact, I spoke with the speaker about it last week, that you, you don't want silence or a vacuum of information because then you get all these conspiracy theories coming out, further dividing the nation. So to your point, I think it's very important that the FBI come forward with that information and that the Congress has the oversight, the hearings. They do this investigation and the American people have clarity on exactly what happened. We'll be deliberate about what we learn, and we will be deliberate about getting to the bottom of this. But I will tell you that we must solve this problem rather quickly. And that's why last week in the hearing that we had with the director of the Secret Service, we were not only unimpressed, but she offered no insight as a 28-year veteran of the Department uh, of the Service. And, and that is unconscionable when you have someone that is not able to at least gain insight or point us to how we need to fix things. So I will tell you, we're doing the right thing. Republicans and Democrats both want answers and we'll get them. Well, and I think she certainly left that oversight committee uh, meeting a, a week ago because the next, with an understanding that uh, folks weren't happy because the next day is when she resigned. Congressman Pete Sessions, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Tony, thank you very much.